Hello and welcome to the video. This is the first video in a couple of brand new series aimed at new builders, specifically talking about Pixhawk, Mission Planner, and Arduplane and Arducopter. Now, I've done an awful lot of Pixhawk and Pixhawk related videos over the last seven or eight years. Pixhawk as a technology has evolved, so now we have the Pixhawk Cube, or just sometimes referred to as a Cube these days, which is the latest iteration, but there's lots and lots of different types of technology about. You can use the Cube on multi rotors, you can use it in fixed wings of all different types, you can use it in submarine marines, in cars, in boats, you name it, you can use it. But since doing a lot of those videos, particularly that series back in 2015, an awful lot has changed. The technology is updated, the flight controllers have evolved significantly, and also technology like Mission Planner, the Ardu Plane, and Ardu Copter technologies have changed dramatically over those five years. The really cool thing is, is even watching that old series now, 80% um, of it, it's still relevant. And that's because although it's changed a lot, the core of how all the system works and all the different pieces go together is exactly the same. Now, last year in the summer of 2019, I put the Ardu plane technology onto non pixel flight controllers and put them in a couple of flying wings and had a fantastic time. But it's time for me to come back and update that Pixhawk series with the modern versions of everything. This video and series has been made with the kind help and support of 3DXR. 3DXR.co.uk are based here in the UK, up in the northeast of England. And for me, they're the go-to place for anything that's Pixhawk, Mission Planner or RD Pilot related. They stock a full range of Pixhawk style flight controllers, a wide range of T-Motor, ESCs, motors and props, and also have a full range of sensors for your Pixhawk builds as well, particularly things like the Lightwear and Bennywick LiDAR and rangefinders. In addition to all the Pixhawk technology for both multi-rotors and fixed wing, they also stock a full range of radio gear from people like FreeSky and others, and also stock a wide range of FPV equipment. So if you're looking for telemetry radio, super accurate GPS sensors, Pixhawk, large scale UAV systems, then check out 3DXR. There's a link in the description. So before I get too far into this, I think it's important that we define our terms. A lot of the problems that I see with people starting out with a Pixhawk based build is that a lot of the words and a lot of the terminology is used interchangeably and lots of places, particularly in places like the forums, it's very difficult to get a consistent view. So this is how I'm going to use the terms for these series. First of all, let me talk about Mission Planner. Mission Planner is a piece of software that you run on your computer. It looks like this, and you use it to both flash the firmware onto the Pixhawk or the flight controller that you're using, whichever version that is. And it also then is used to configure everything up. And you can also fly your model about and monitor it live if you really want to with the radios. APM Planner and Q Ground Control are kind of different variations on that theme. So they're like Mission Planner. They support lots and lots of operating systems. For new pilots, I would stay away from those. Use Mission Planner. The setup will go an awful lot easier. But again, both of those are software applications that you run on a PC or a Linux or a Mac. And that's what you connect your Pixhawk to, to flash it, to set it up, and then to do any troubleshooting and fly it later on. The Pixhawk is the flight controller. The Pixhawk is this little bit here. Now there's loads of different Pixhawks available. Uh, this is a Pixhawk cube. This is the purple cube. It's a low profile one. Uh, I'll go through what a standard kind of cube setup looks like in a moment. There's lots of different versions of Pixhawk around. Uh, if you want the ultimate flying experience, then the Cube is the one you really want to go for. And uh, if you want to follow along but don't want to spend that kind of money, there are other versions of the Pixhawk around. It's very easy to get hold of that technology for not a lot of money. But the Pixhawk comes without anything installed on it. So if you plug it into your computer, you'll just get one little LED light and you won't be able to see or read anything. And that's because when the Pixhawk supplied, it has a blank memory. You have to flash it with the code that you want to use. And that is what we'll do in the next video. The code that I'm talking about is something called ArduPilot. 
Now, Ardu Pilot is a suite of technology. It's, there's Ardu Sub, Ardu Rover, Ardu Copter, Ardu Plane. Surprise, surprise, you use the one that's right for the model that you're setting up. If you're going to use um, a car, you install Ardu Rover. If it's going to be a fixed wing model, you install Ardu Plane and so on. Now, this technology is installed uh, via Mission Planner and it's very, very easy to set up. Again, this is what I would recommend if you're starting out. PX4 is another alternative to the Ardu Pilot family of firmwares. Again, I wouldn't use that for a first time build. It tends to be that things like Q Ground Control and the PX4 technologies go together and Mission Planner and the Ardu Pilot technologies go together. Now they do kind of work interchangeably, but if you're a new builder, my advice is stay away from those, go Mission Planner and go Ardu Pilot. So let me quickly show you what a Pixhawk 2 setup looks like on the desk. So the Pixhawk 2, or the Cube, as it's commonly known, is here in the middle, sat on the carrier board. Now there's loads of different versions of the carrier board. This is the standard one. There are kind of mini versions. There are much bigger versions if you've got things like a multi-rotor. And you can see it has lots and lots of places to plug loads and loads of different things in. Now there are different versions. This is the Cube that we were just looking at. It's a low profile one. It doesn't have all of the redundant sensors in that the Pixhawk, uh, the bigger Pixhawk Cube brothers have. There's a whole family of Pixhawk Cubes. Go and have a look on the website. Next thing to look at then is the GPS. Again, different versions available, but this one is the one that I'm going to be using here. It has a little arming button and a couple of status LEDs on the side that will show you the arming status. That needs to be mounted ideally outside the model with a view of the sky. Next bit is this little power module. Now you're going to plug your flight battery into one side and if you're using a plane you're going to plug the ESC onto the other side. And that is then going to turn that battery voltage into voltages that the Pixhawk Cube can use and be powered with. And it plugs into one of the two power sockets at the front. You can set up Pixhawk with redundant power if you really wanted to. That's the kind of cool stuff that you can do with Pixhawk that you can't do with a lot of the flight controllers. Next thing here is the little cable that goes into the RC in. That's usually going to be plugged into some kind of radio receiver and talk S bus. So that's where you're going to plug your free sky or your whatever into there. Then we have a buzzer. That is the thing that lets you know the arming status, lets you know when there's a problem. That plugs into that little port on that side. And then the last thing in the top right hand corner is the radio. Now these are telemetry radios plugging into one of the telemetry ports and these send back information over this antenna to a sister unit that would be plugged into your laptop, PC, tablet, or whatever. And that then allows you via Mission Planner when everything's actually flying to monitor what's going on. It also allows you to wirelessly connect the Pixhawk to set everything up. There is a USB cable at the side that you can plug in and over that USB cable is how we're going to flash the firmware, which is the first thing that we'll do next time. But that's what a basic Pixhawk system looks like. Now, a couple of quick tips uh, before I get on to the next video in the series where we're actually going to flash the firmware and start setting things up. And that is that all of the information that I'm going to go through here is documented brilliantly in the ardupilot.org website, link down below. It is one of the best repositories of information around. Now, it can feel a little bit overwhelming when you first go in because it covers pretty much everything, how you set up all the different sensors and how you do this and how you do that. But actually, if you're just setting up a multi-rotor or you're setting up a plane, as I'm going to be doing in these two initial series, then each individual step is laid out. So if you go onto the ardupilot.org wiki or documentation, I would recommend before you start unplugging things, soldering wires, starting to undo sticky pads and putting things inside models, go and read that through because it is a fountain of knowledge. And most of the questions that I get asked about ArduPilot are actually in the wiki and already answered in there. Be aware that the Pixhawk doesn't have a power distribution board, although it has that separate little cable that we've just looked at that's there to power the Pixhawk itself. If you're going to be installing it into something like a multi-rotor, there's nowhere on here that you can kind of power all of your ESCs from. So you are going to need a separate power distribution board if you want to send the battery voltage into lots of different places. If we're setting up something simple like a plane where you have one ESC that's going to plug into the side of that little power module, then that's fine. But if it's going to be something more complicated, then you are also going to need some kind of power distribution board or PDB. 
The other top tip I'll give you is start very simply. You can put things like this. This is an airspeed sensor. You can put that on a plane and you can have our do plane do some very clever things, automatic takeoff, landing, um, autonomous missions and loads of stuff. Don't start with all of the sensors and everything installed right from day one. Start as I'm doing here in this series with the basics, make sure that that's all working and that's all great, and then start building on adding cameras, gimbals, additional sensors, additional radios onto the system. Because what can happen is a build can become so complicated that it becomes very, very difficult to troubleshoot, especially if you're a first time builder. So follow along with the series, don't get too far ahead, and then when you've got to the end of the series and you know everything's working, then it's time to start building out and adding extra things. Do follow along with the series and do make sure that you have read that wiki, um, the rdpilot.org website. Following along with these steps will help you avoid 90% of the common problems that you're gonna bump into if you are a new builder. So if you start to struggle, the wiki and the steps documented in the wiki alongside these videos would be the first place that I would go. So I'm excited to get this video series done. I'm a big fan of the Pixhawk hardware technology, Mission Planner, and the RD Pilot families of firmware that you flash onto those flight controllers. So join me in the next video where we're going to actually put the firmware onto the Pixhawk, or Pixhawk Cube as I'm using here, and we'll start to set everything up. Again, if you have any questions or anything you want to see as part of the series, then do pop them down below and I'll try and make sure I cover them as part of the build. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.